the Greater Lagos Vision and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has signed the 2022 Appropriation Bill of 1.758 trillion naira into law. Capital expenditure stands at 1.16 trillion naira, representing 66% of the budget estimates. Recurrent expenditure is 591 billion naira, representing 34% to maintain the 66.34% ratio budget tradition of Lagos State. The 2022 budget is to consolidate infrastructure development across the state in line with the administration's themes developmental agenda. This is aimed at addressing education, infrastructure, health, technology, social intervention, ray projects and other critical areas. Welcome once again. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. <music> This episode features Governor Sawonlu signs 1.7 trillion Naira Lagos 2022 budget into law. Full implementation expected. Red Blue Line Ray projects completion deadline on course. Lagos unveils consolidated transport levy for commercial drivers. These and many more will we return. <music> Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has signed the year 2022 appropriation bill of 1.75 trillion naira into law. The budget has a slight increase from the initial 1.38 trillion naira to 1.758 trillion naira. Budget of consolidation. That's what Governor Sawunlu called the 2022 budget. He signed it into law at the State House, Alausa Ikeja. The budget has a slight increase in the grants total from the initial 1.38 trillion naira to 1.758 trillion naira. Governor Sawunlu explained reasons for the increase. It's not that the House Assembly are appropriating budgets to themselves or just, you know, um, um, we had that conversation and it's because we both agree and realize that we need to capture in the full budget, you know, all of our financing options that we have deployed for the blue line and the red line projects, which we had raised sufficient funding for, and to be able to put up a level that will not also put pressure on our cash flow and on our debt sustainability. The deficit financing, according to Governor Sawunlu, would be from a combination of external and domestic loans and bonds. These are well within the state's fiscal sustainability parameters. The budget has a capital and recurrent expenditure ratio of 66.34, while the recurrent expenditure is 591.280 billion naira. The capital expenditure is 1.166 trillion naira, which brings the budget total size to 1.758 trillion naira. The 2022 budget recognizes several other funded project transactions that are now being also accounted for using corporate transactions. Um, there are IFC transactions and there are some other, you know, off balance sheet transactions that we have all seen together. And that is what has given us this very um, um, well-detailed budget size. House Speaker Chairman on Appropriation, Honorable Yisha Ogbolaho, represented the Speaker, Mudashiru Obasa. Yisha explained that the estimate includes leftovers from previous allocations in the 2021 budget. Yes, it is a budget of consolidation. And um, by the time the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Project probably goes through that budget, we realize that most projects that His Excellency have initiated are going to be completed. Governor Sawunlu had on Wednesday, November 24, 2021, presented the 2022 appropriation bill of over 1.38 trillion naira before members of the State House of Assembly for consideration and approval. <music> The Lagos State Government has assured that it would leave no stone unturned to ensure the full implementation of the 2022 budget. 
Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egube, stated this while giving a detailed analysis of the 2022 budget in Ikeja. The approved budget size is 1.758 trillion naira. Capital expenditure stands at 1.166 trillion naira, representing 66% of the budget estimates. Recurrent expenditure is 591 billion naira, representing 34% to maintain the 66.34% budget tradition of Lagos State. Christian Budget of Consolidation, Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egube, described it as a major landmark in the history of Lagos State. He said the 2022 budget analysis was a demonstration of the present administration's commitment to completing all ongoing projects. The budget focuses quite heavily and deliberately uh, by 66% on our capital spend around our infrastructure. Total revenue is estimated at 1.237 trillion, while deficit funding requirement is 521 billion. Egube further gave analysis of the year 2022 budget estimates. The total budget size of 1.75 trillion will be funded from a total revenue estimate of 1.2 trillion, which is broken down to as follows. Total internal generated revenue of 980 billion, capital receipts 142 billion, and federal transfers 256 billion. 73.5 percent, representing 599 billion of the projected total internally generated revenue, is expected to be contributed by LRS which is the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service. The commissioner also gave a sectoral analysis of the 2022 budget. For the general public service, the recurrent expenditure will be 181 billion, while the capital expenditure is 103 billion, totaling 284.7 billion, representing 16% of budget size. To public order and safety, we have 32.38 billion recurrent and 38.62 billion capital. Earlier, the Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Egube, appealed to citizens to participate in governance and fulfill their civic responsibilities by paying their taxes, as and when due, in order to ensure optimal performance of the budget. <music> Two sets of 10 targle trains have been acquired by the Lagos State Government for the Red Line Rail Project. This is in fulfillment of Governor Babajide Sawonlu administration to make transportation easier, faster and affordable. Governor Sawonlu completed the acquisition deal of the trains at the Milwaukee facilities of Spanish train manufacturer Targo Incorporated in the United States. The acting Milwaukee mayor, Kavila Johnson, receives Governor Sawun Lu and his team to the city. The governor and his delegation inspect the interior design of the newly acquired Targo trains with a speed limit of 330 km per hour. The intracity metropolitan trains are a boost for the Red Line project to kick off. A train is not something you just, just you know, go on the shelf and pick up. Right. And so we were very, we were pretty challenged knowing where we can get, you know, brand new trains like this. And so we're very, very lucky that our partnership and our conversations with some of our partners here started with, uh, with Talgo about a month, a month and a half ago. And because of Christmas and New Year, we couldn't, you know, close it up. But I'm so, so excited that um, within the, you know, the first month of the year, we've been able to take a trip, a very deserving one for that matter. And we've seen a beautiful white and red train. You know, coincidentally, the rail line is called a red line. It's called a red line. And so you can see they've given us the color as well. So we're just going to brand in and put up our, our seal there. Chief Executive Officer and President Targo USA, Antonio Perez, warns against not putting the trains to use. He shows gratitude for the purchase. 
With a capacity of 500,000 passengers daily, the Red Line will have 11 stations and when completed, will be the first operational metro systems in West Africa. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Uyidoku, reporting for Plus TV, Africa. Road Transport Workers Union is now to pay 800 Naira as a consolidated levy to the Lagos State Government. The agreement between the state and the transport union is a move to harmonize dues collected by the government from commercial motorists at parks and garages across the state. This is according to the Commissioner for Finance, Rabi Ulowo. The official launch of the Consolidated Informal Transport Sector Levy has no doubt opened a new vista in the transportation business in Lagos State. Every commercial driver in the state will now pay 800 naira to be shared among government agencies and local governments. The Commissioner for Finance, Rabi Olowo, says the harmonized levy will help reduce multiple taxes, dues and levies to all agents of state is to organize the collection process, to make it more structured, so that uh, those collecting dues will not be running after vehicles, because ICANN do not run after me, MBA do not run after lawyers. So we have come together to say that we want to put in a structure of the collection process so that we can improve the look and feel of our transport sector. We want to reduce the multiplicity of taxes. Uh, people have complained a lot you know, you pay parking fees, you pay motor fees, you pay this and, you know, and all sorts of taxes, dues and levies, either due to government or association. This consolidated informal transport sector levy will consolidate all taxes, all dues, all levies due to government and association bodies. In addition to this, we have seen some people, they are not local government staff, they are non national union, they are not road, they are call or no agent, you see them flagging their stick, they be collecting money, all receipted. So if anybody say, I pay 3,000, I pay 1,000, they might not be lying. We have not sat down. How do we do? When I say, okay, if you are taking off from Badagri, just collect this 800 naira. If you like, go to Ikorodu 20 times. Once you flash that 800 naira, nobody in Ikorodu we have to pay another government levy again. The chairman of the state's chapter of road transport workers, Musilu Akinsoya, popularly known as MC Oluomo, seems to disagree with the arrangement. I need the task because I have to call me on my daily task. You know what we need to task that produce that day. As you understand, only you should be able to see what you call affect the national union ticket. You understand? We no affect in national union ticket. It will to affect the Kwaba who is your party on the park. Loju kong kiri. The process is built to take effect in February 2022. The security of lives and property of Lagosians has enunciated in the security and governance pillar of the Governor Babajide Sawulu themes development agenda seems not in doubt. Lagos can be said to be presently safer and more secure. With me on the program is the newly promoted Assistant Inspector General of Police, Hakim Odumosu. Until his elevation last December 2021, he was a Commissioner of Police, Lagos State Command. And together, we shall be looking at security generally in Lagos State. You meet my guests right after this break. Please don't go away. Congratulations once again, um, AIG Hakim Odumusu, on your promotion. And thank you for being with us on the Greater Lagos Vision. Thank you. Good morning. You're considered as um, being successful, one of the most successful uh, CPs that Lagos State has had. You've recorded so much successes during your tenure. Tell us exactly what is the experience like policing Lagos, a state like Lagos? It was a collective participation that made Lagos to be. All the stakeholders in the security architecture in Lagos were co-opted to the security architecture of Lagos. 
And that's why Lagos has been successful. It's not a one-man show, <clears throat> and not only police show, because you know that security is everybody's business. My starting point was being able to let all stakeholders bring them on board and let them know their relevance, their importance, and the need for them now to collaborate and assist us to succeed. Tell us exactly how the team's agenda has been able to aid you in your job. The team is succeeding in Lagos because there is security in Lagos. In education, the teachers can go to school, the students can go to school. So talk about traffic now, those in that traffic management now, so the last man, the other can go and work successfully without anything. In the economy now, there is security. And that's why I got to know that bank security in Lagos is one of the targets that I laid out and have succeeded. So when there is security, economy grows. So the team agenda in Lagos, fortunately, security is part of the agenda. But to me, security is the beginning of the agenda and it's the end of the agenda because we are able to prepare the ground, make the environment safe, and that's why every other uh, policy of the government, both at the federal, the state, and local government now, could be executed because there is security. You were at the Hello Chambers, um, I think uh, last year, yes, you were there and you addressed the members of the House. And there was something very striking that you said, that police in Lagos is not a tea party. Tell us exactly what you meant. How do you mean by that, sir? It's not a tea party. And part of why it's not a tea party is what I've told you. Number one, I said I don't have family life. And I don't have social life. You can't be in Lagos now and have more of that. The time is supposed to be the social life period now are the period that the bad boys now want to plan. But once you are out on your own, and everybody says that, definitely. So coming to Lagos now, you should be ready to sacrifice. You should be ready to have a teamwork. You should be ready to leg work. Not just like when I went to the House Assembly, I want that to appreciate what I've done. Because I'm a police officer. As a police officer, I'm a law enforcement officer. I'm to enforce the laws passed by both the bylaws at the local council level, the state laws, as well as federal law by the National Assembly. If the laws are not there, that's what I'm going to do. So I need to thank them now. They will pass some law that assisted us. And more importantly, the law on courtesy, for example. Now let's look at answers. It's something that every right-thinking Nigerian or Lagosians had wished never happened. The destructions, the killings, and most of some of your officers were killed in the process. And one year after, tell us how you were able to manage the situation. Right. My police officers, we lost police officers, personal properties of their, and they call it government properties, vehicles, but... Because of the nature of the job in Lagos now, because of the traffic in Lagos, because of our commitment to the job in Lagos, almost all of us will sleep in office. So when the SRS issue came up now, and police stations were attacked, many personal effects of police officers were got in that. Many of their personal cars were, even their houses, even when they even succeeded in getting into the barracks, like going through the barracks, all their wares were like a... Even Aja police station, where our barracks attached to it, every album there, all the personal effects. So the trauma was much. But part of what we have signed for is sacrifices, if happens, and experience even our life. We have that one behind our mind that we are to serve the country, we are to be 100% loyal to the constitution of the country. And because of serving the country now, because of the hazards of the job now we have, we should be prepared, and we are prepared to pay a supreme price for the country. And that's what happened. So having this one behind, so we are not totally, totally 100% devastated because we know along the line it's going to happen. And it has happened. Community policing, what is your take on it? Community policing is very, very useful. Very, very. And that is part of the benefits that 
assisted me in policy in Lagos. Because what's the police, population of police? Well, the totality of police in Nigeria compared with the Nigerian population, definitely, definitely we are not up to one quarter of the Nigerian population. Put all security agents together in this country. Let me talk about police precisely. Now we're down to police. Put all police officers in this country together. The totality of police in this country. We are not up to one quarter of Nigerian population. I can tell for free that police in this country, we are not up to one million. Police in this country. And all being speculated now, Nigeria is almost 100 million or more than that. So we are not to one million. So which means that we can never be everywhere. We need communities. Community policing, we need catch them young in rural areas. So we even want the younger ones now to be involved so in police and everything. I'm advocating. If at the primary secondary schools, the uh, yes, curriculum of primary secondary school, community policing. Right from the beginning, once you start doing that one now, you're already introducing policing to them. You're already complicating. So, love, affection of police, the trust, you build that into them. And they too will now know that, the police will now know that, all what I'm doing, this young lad knows. He knows my limitation. He knows what I should do, what I should not do. And now they serve as cautionary one to the police, so that police will not be in excess. So police officers are the catching on the ground of members of the public and misbehave. But if all these things are taught right from the youth, you'll be able to bring everybody on. And it's going to our assist. So through that one too now, some may develop interest in joining police in the future. More than those who just decide to join police, maybe out of need, not out of interest. Just like any other profession. Not everybody that joins any profession will join out of interest. All professions in the world. One of your dreams or wishes is to see that you, Lagos State security in Lagos State is better than the way you met it. Now, what is your parting word to your officers and men as you move on? And would you say that that dream of yours has been achieved? I can boldly say that I met Lagos and I'm leaving Lagos better, safer than. The handwriting are there. You just mention one now, now, there has never been any crime, bank robbery. It's an achievement. When I came into Lagos now, there are this issue of one million boys. Issue of Awawa. Terrorizing everywhere in Lagos. They're even writing letters. Boldly. Audaciously giving letters to the community we are coming to social dates. We are coming to social dates. It has been on the past in Lagos. You can't tell me there's one million boys anywhere operating in Lagos. You can't say there's, oh, our boys, they're stopping. You can't say anybody now, for the past one year or so, that write a letter. We are our boys. We have 15, 20 of us coming. If you like, call police. You can't say we are robbers now, write to communities. Right to that they are coming to attack them. Because of the strategy you put on. People now sleep with their eyes closed. And not only that one now, snoring. So I'm planning my officers, those I'm leaving behind, in the service entirely, not only in Lagos, but Lagos in particular. Because I'm a Nigerian police force officer, not Lagos State police force officer. Only, I'm only serving in Lagos. So, to let them have the fear of God in the policing. When you have the fear of God in policing, you'll be able to carry out other members of the public. Members of the public will see you now as somebody they can run to to solve their security challenge problems. I find that we are dealing with a fellow human being. We call it as blood running in his or veins like us. Yes. Thank you so much for your time with us on the Greater Lagos Vision. God bless you. And I wish you more success. Okay. Yep. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovey Kuku Oyedoku. Bye for now. <laughs>